In this video, you're going to learn why Misty is a game changer in AI for everyday tech users and innovators alike. Olama on its own is already a super powerful tool, but adding a front end can hone that power in amazing ways. Although it's not the most popular option, I'd say for most folks, it is the best tool for the job. I have used so many different AI tools since my time on the founding team for Olama, and I'm excited to show you why Misty may be the best option for you. A few months ago, I reviewed Misty, but a few things have changed since then. So it was time for me to do a bit of an update. Now, like the first video, this one's not sponsored by anyone. I'm just really impressed with how Misty does what it does. So let's dive right in and get started with table stakes. Every front end needs a chat interface, and I think this may be the best of the bunch. Sure, we can select a model and then ask a question. For example, let's ask, what are the key principles of machine learning? When we get our answer, the next step will probably be more information on something introduced in the answer. But rather than asking to go into more detail, we can just select any word or phrase and then select Delve from the drop down menu. Misty opens up a new split chat window that gives us more information on that topic. Now we have a detailed explanation of neural networks right alongside our original conversation. Then notice how Misty underlines other potential topics. It becomes a bit like IMDB an endless rabbit hole of information on whatever topic you are researching. We can go from neural networks to backpropagation to gradient descent, each in its own organized thread. When working with AI models, your questions and answers typically build on each other, adding to the context. For some questions, you may actually know better than the model, which sometimes makes a mistake. For instance, if the model makes an error about Python programming syntax, or, or maybe on the, the functions that you've actually used, you can directly edit its response to show the correct information. So rather than adding erroneous information to the context, you can edit the answer to be more accurate and then continue the conversation. Or maybe you would just prefer to have the model try again. One of the amazing strengths of Misty is the deep branching capabilities of the tool. But after a few back and forths and delves and retries and branches, it can get a bit confusing. And that's where the visual map comes in, letting you navigate the conversation in a more intuitive way. We can see how the conversation branches out as we work with it. I haven't seen this feature done this well in any other tool. I really love one more feature about the chat interface in Misty. Recently, there have been a few new reasoning models. Some folks really love these, but we've seen that often the thinking stage doesn't always help the model make the best decision. Plus, showing that reasoning can be downright distracting. Sometimes it's useful to see, but more often, I wish it wasn't shown at all. Misty deals with this in an amazing way. Let me show you an example using DeepSeq 671B. I'll ask it to solve this logic puzzle. If a train travels 120 miles in two hours heading west, and another train travels 90 miles in 1.5 hours heading east, which train is moving faster? Watch how it shows its reasoning process, then cleanly tucks it away once the final answer is ready. Chat is great in Misty, but as I mentioned, it's just table stakes. An area where Misty really shines is in its ability to help you interact with your own content through a feature called Knowledge Stacks. Think of Knowledge Stacks as your personal research assistant that can understand and answer questions about any document you threw at it. Let me show you how powerful Knowledge Stacks can be. I've got this research paper about climate change and I wanna understand its key findings. I'll drag it into Misty and ask, what are the main conclusions of this study? But what's really powerful is asking follow-up questions like, how does this compare to the IPCC's latest report? Misty can cross-reference information between documents in the stack. You can set up multiple knowledge stacks, each with its own unique configuration and purpose. For example, I have one set up for my Obsidian Vault, where I keep all my research notes, and another for all the PDFs that I've collected from various places. 
you can get really creative with what you include. PDFs and Markdown documents, Word documents, EPUBs, CSVs, YouTube videos, and even just plain text notes that you type in. The system is incredibly flexible. Knowledge stacks are particularly clever because they integrate with the chat interface. Once you've selected a stack, you can start asking questions about your document as naturally as you chat with a friend. The AI will pull relevant information from your documents to give you accurate, contextual answers. Of course, this is just RAG, but it's RAG done a little bit differently than most implementations, and I think it's really cool. Now, here's a neat trick for one-off queries. If you just want to ask questions about a single document, you don't even need to create a stack. Simply drag and drop your file directly into the chat window, and you can start getting insights immediately. This is perfect for those quick analysis needs when you don't need to set up a whole new stack. This feature fundamentally changes how we interact with our personal and professional documents, making information retrieval and analysis much more intuitive and powerful. So that's awesome, but sometimes you also need to get information off of the internet. Misty handles this elegantly with its web integration feature. When you click the globe button, Misty actually fetches current web content and processes it into the context that the AI model can use. For example, if you're asking about current events or need up-to-date information about a company, Misty can pull that information from reliable web sources and incorporate it into the conversation. While some users may think this means the model is browsing the web in real time, what's actually happening is a little bit different. Misty is doing the heavy lifting of fetching, processing, and contextualizing the web content before the model ever sees it. The end result feels seamless. You get current, accurate information in your conversations without having to leave the interface or manually copy-paste content. Whether you're researching market trends, checking recent developments in technology, or gathering information for a project, this feature bridges the gap between static model knowledge and dynamic web content. This approach also helps maintain the quality and reliability of responses, since the information comes from verified web sources rather than the model's training data, which may be outdated or unexpectedly biased in one way or another. I was particularly excited to see one more feature added to Misty. Misty has always embedded Olama into the application, which is fantastic because it means new users only need to install Misty without worrying about Olama separately. Now the platform offers even more flexibility with remote connections. This new capability is fantastic for several scenarios. First, you might already have Olama installed on your computer and want to leverage that existing setup. Or perhaps you have access to a more powerful machine elsewhere that you'd like to tap into. In my case, I maintain an instance on Brev that's equipped with multiple H100 GPUs, some serious computing power that I'd love to access through Misty. I've installed Tailscale on my Brev machine to make this remote connection possible. Tailscale creates a secure, encrypted network that makes remote resources feel local. I named my powerful Brev machine Big Boy because, well, those H100s deserve a fitting name. And connecting to it through Misty is surprisingly straightforward. Here's how you set it up. In Misty, click to add a new remote model provider. From the provider list, which impressively includes Azure OpenAI and Claude and DeepSeek and Perplexity and Gemini and others, select Olama Remote. Enter your preferred name for the connection, and then add the URL. In my case, it's http colon slash slash big boy colon 11434. Then click Fetch Models to update the available model list and choose the models you want to be able to use. I just said all of them. Once connected, you can run those models right through Misty's interface. I'm currently running DeepSeek 671 on my remote setup, and the performance is impressive. My local machine is an M1 Max with 64 gigs of unified memory. I can load up some pretty big models, but I couldn't dream of loading the full DeepSeek. The ability to leverage remote computing power while maintaining Misty's user-friendly interface truly offers the best of both worlds. 
This feature is particularly valuable for teams working with shared resources, developers testing different configurations, or anyone who wants to separate their compute resources from their working environment. It's also perfect for those who want to experiment with more powerful hardware without having to invest in it directly. Of course, it's not without its limitations, both real and perceived. Some folks don't like that this is not a open source project. The developers have just chosen to not make it open source, but there's no way you can imply that that, on its own, makes it any less secure or trustworthy. But you have to make that decision on your own. Now, I mentioned how reasoning models hide the thinking behind a dropdown, which is great, but I wish Misty also showed more information with regards to the timing of that thinking. I want to see how long that thinking took to see when it finally started answering the question. When opening the list of models, it can take a while if you have a lot of models. On my big boy machine, I have every single model and every quantization that you can find on the olama.com library. And I've downloaded them and they're all available to me. So it takes a while to show that list. I wish they were more clear about the relationship to Olama on their website. What they're doing, embedding Olama in their product, is totally fine. We expected more tools to do it that same way when we first came up with the idea of Olama. But it can still be kind of confusing. In fact, I've seen a number of videos that talk about setting it up that say you need to download Olama first, which you don't. I guess one other thing that I hate is something I don't think they really have any control over. They were just unlucky enough to choose a name that's also shared with a scammy ETF called Misty. Do not take this video as advice to acquire or not acquire that thing. Now, this isn't a full overview of what Misty can do, but rather highlighting what I like best about it. I do have plans to do a number of other videos over the coming weeks that look at a few other aspects of Misty in detail for the new user. And I'll be doing the same thing for an update of the Open Web UI video as well. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to get notified as they come out. What do you think of Misty? Have you used it? Is there another tool you prefer? I wish there was a perfect tool out there, but there isn't. That said, I hope this review has been helpful in figuring out what Misty can do for you. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.